Welcome to today's talk show and our focus majorly today is going to be on the issuance of operational guidelines for the self-help groups where the Uganda Microfinance Regulatory Authority with support from partners are looking to restore investor and consumer confidence in the microfinance industry. Well here to discuss this and more is Edith Tusubida, the Executive Director of Uganda Microfinance Regulatory Authority. Good morning and you are most welcome Edith. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mildred. Uh, nice to be here. Viewers, I am very, very, very happy to be here so that we, so that we can unveil our society, the issues that, that they are in, and concerns that we have, especially for the Tire 4 sector. Mm. All right. Also joining us this morning is Care International Uganda, who through the National Policy Regulatory Program Support Uganda are supporting and strengthening uh, saving groups. So we'll be hearing from Grace Majara, who is Care's Global VSL Deputy Director, and she has also worked in the fin uh, financial inclusion sector, specifically the saving groups, and she has also consistently and passionately advocated for women economic empowerment good morning to you and welcome thank you Midred. I'm happy to be here mm. and looking forward for our dis uh, to our discussion thank you we'll also be hearing from Edton Babundi Abahika who happens to be the livelihoods program manager at care Uganda you're most welcome to the show sir yeah thank you Midred. Uh, greetings to our viewers I am excited to be here as you can see, the only gentleman among ladies. <laughs> this space is no matter which fight by men, but uh, as you can see, times are changing. empowerment, <laughs> times are changing. So I am humbled to really be here and make my contribution. Oh, thank you. Thank well, you. Well, if you are just joining us, our main focus, our main topic today is going to be on understanding the issuance of the operational guidelines for self-help groups. Now, my panelists, before we delve into the details of this discussion and also, you know, for the benefit of the conversation and for the benefit of the viewer, I would like us to, you know, start with an overview of the work of both institutions and how these complement each other. I would like to start with you, Edith. Uganda, thank you so much, uh, moderator. Uganda Microfinance Regulatory Authority comes into existence following the enactment of the Tire 4 uh, law, which came into existence in 2016, and operations started in 2017. The background of the, of the Uganda Microfinance Regulator Authority and the Act, Tire 4 law, starts way back in 1999, when the Central Bank, Bank of Uganda issued a policy statement on microfinance regulation and supervision. They were looking for a framework under which Uganda microfinance institutions can therefore start operating, where they recognized that it was important now to put the financial sector in Uganda into different tires. The different tires I'm now talking about is tire one, is, regula is regulated under commercial banks, while Tire 2 is regulated under credit financial institutions. Tire 3 is regulated under the deposit microfinance deposit taking institutions. These, by the way, are birthed from the microfinance sector growth. And the last one is the Tire 4 sector. The Tire 4 sector regulates circles, it regulates uh, self-help groups, it regulates non-deposit taking microfinance institutions while also regulating all money lenders in the country. And the Tire 4 is being implemented by Uganda Microfinance Regulator Authority. In other words, Uganda Microfinance Regulator Authority is a second central bank trying to look at 
those areas, those sectors that were contributing, that were making up the microfinance sector in the country. As such, the government established the legal framework for them to be regulated so that we can be able to understand what is taking place in these sectors that were majorly informal at that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, these uh, self-help groups include so many institutions, the Ruskas, the Niginas, the Vislas, Village uh, Savings and Loan Associations, even whoever comes together and they are putting together their savings or they are able to lend to each other, all those belong to the self-help group organizations. Mm. Thank you so much, Edith. Uh, over to you, Mr. Edton, just an overview of the work that uh, CARE International Uganda does. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mildred and, and viewers. So CARE, globally, internationally, is an organization that uh, believes that a world without poverty is possible to begin with. But also, we strongly believe that that world cannot happen without a contribution from a significant proportion of society who are the women and girls. And so CARE uh, implements its activities using uh, a gender equality framework, a gender equality lens that looks at empowering uh, the vulnerable groups and communities to be able to improve their well-being. And uh, these programs are various uh, in Uganda here CARE is one of the oldest agencies. We've been here uh, <coughs> since 1979. Uh, the first MOU we have with the government of Uganda, particularly uh, Minister of Finance. We deliver services in different uh, uh, sectors. We have the climate justice sector that really looks at issues of climate change, issues of disaster preparedness to ensure that we have climate smart agriculture to ensure that we are saving our ecosystem mm. so that we can have sustainable development as a country. We also pay close attention to gender issues so we deliver our program through the gender justice program again that looks at the gender equality lens that looks at the relationship between women and men that looks at issues of uh, gender-based violence, issues of sexual reproductive health, all those issues that are able to impact on families, but also impact on the well-being of, uh, of women and girls. The livelihood sector, which I had, uh, particularly is looking at how do we support <coughs> the households, the women and girls, to be able to produce on a sustainable, uh, in a sustainable way. So we focus on looking at food security and nutrition to ensure that people have enough food and that food is nutritious. Hmm. Um, dear viewers, those of you who watched the launch of the nutrition status report by the Prime Minister two days ago, you see that we have a very critical issue with regard to nutrition, where almost one in every four children are actually stunting. Mm. Thank you. So Thank you. We, we, we focus on that. We focus on women economic empowerment, youth empowerment. Mm. We do this through partnerships. So we are happy to work with Ministry um, of Finance, Ministry of Gender, Ministry of Agriculture, Office of the Prime Minister. And before I conclude, we are implementing now the National Policy Regulatory Program Support, which is looking at how do we ensure that as a country we have uh, uh, an ecosystem, an enabling environment for transitioning women in business, for transitioning women collectives from micro to small, from small to medium enterprises. And we are doing that in partnership with Minister of Finance. Right now, Minister of Finance is working on the savings group policy framework, mm. which is closely related to what uh, UMRA is launching because UMRA is looking at the self-help group 
guidelines. guidelines. We believe that once these are done, we will have a more organized enabling environment. We have also done work with Uganda Women Entrepreneurship Program. So in a nutshell, as CARE, we are looking at amplifying women voices, but not leaving the men behind. Mm. Because we know behind every, besides every successful woman, there must be a man. So we work towards harmonizing and ensuring that, for example, the savings that come in the household are able to support the development of that particular household. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much. Grace, I'd like to uh, bring you in right there. Well, Edith has already uh, described or given us the examples of the self-help groups. So I'd like to know from you, how have these self-help groups impacted individuals or women or the community at large? So thank you very much, uh, uh, Midred. So um, we have uh, evidence, researched evidence about the impact of these self-help groups or what we sometimes call Village Savings and Loans Association, Silk. I mean, there are so many names out there. First of all, when you look at the composition of those groups, in initially uh, the majority were women. And we know that uh, when we go back, there was a FinScope study that was done in 2013, if I'm not, I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, like at that time, uh, the, the, the financial, financial excluded uh, uh, population was, I think, at 51 or something like that. Mm. So, but now you find that it's only 19 percent of Ugandans that have uh, uh, former uh, bank accounts mm. with the probably tier one, tier two and three. Mm. Uh, but uh, when you look at financially included Ugandans, I think we are at 80, 82 or something like that. So you find that majority of those belong to these informal groups mm. besides the mobile money and all that. So, you f so when you look at the impact, of course, we are looking at the impact of uh, delivering financial services to, the, to the, the category of the population that would ideally be excluded. Mm. That's one of them. But it's not only doesn't stop at uh, you know being included financially majority of those people that participate in the groups especially women mm. you find that uh, they graduate from just saving to investment mm. they start investing in income generating activities they buy property or protect their property or assets and uh, those studies are out there mm. and uh, everybody can read them mm. but besides the economic uh, benefits, there is a very strong social capital, the social benefits that come from these groups. We know that in most cases women don't have voices, but out of these groups we, women get back their confidence, they start participating as leaders and start at group level, but eventually some of them have joined even the formal you know, leadership kind of, you know, uh, local councils and things like that. So the benefits are really, uh, you know, uh, known and the, uh, mm. for those who have participated, including some of us ourselves, we've really participated. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so these uh, groups, do they target mostly the women or also men are part of it? So initially, when you look at, uh, you know, like uh, most of these groups, we've been traditional, traditional, the traditional these groups have been there. The Roskas, Monom Kavi, and the, all those groups, the farmers associations, they've been there. But uh, the more structured, you know, uh, savings that uh, have happened was uh, when these uh, village savings and loans associations that were launched in Uganda way back in the late 90s, probably around 98 you find out that at the time women were the majority, 80%. And at that time men were saying those groups are for women. Let mm. them go mm. and sit mm. and whatever. They, they had not really realized the impact, the economic impact of those groups. But uh, when you mm. look at the data that is coming out now, you find that the men's participation has really increased. Mm. In Uganda, I think now it stands at 68% women, then the other percentage belongs to, to men. So it's not only mm. for women now, although when you look at the genesis, women were more than men. All right. Yeah. Yeah, just to chip in a little yeah. bit okay. uh, on that, 
we um, under the National Police Regulatory Program support, we did um, a, a landscaping survey. We tried to go out in the countryside and establish what is the nature of these groups and how do they stand. And uh, just like she said, we, we discovered that uh, majority of these groups, uh, especially uh, at village level, they, are, they, they comprise more, more women. But overall, we were able to find, you know, uh, um, close to 500,000 groups. We were able to talk to around 165 of these groups. And uh, we discovered that uh, men have joined these groups as counterparts. But we also discovered that there is strong emergence of strong women in leadership that are steering most of these groups uh, to come. And so the negative attitude of male has come a long way because now they are joining yeah. and they are also taking uh, right. a, a, um, an active role mm. and accepting that actually women can take leadership of these groups right. and be able to move. Yeah. They seem to agree that these are better custodians when it comes <laughs> to financial services. Okay, so I'd like to bring it back to you, Edith. Uh, yes. the, the, the groups are, you know, busy. There is a lot going on in the group. So I would want to know how have they impacted the sector, the microfinance industry sector? And that explains why we have got guidelines right now. Yes. Because uh, there are so many Ugandans out there mm. who put together their resources and they need our protection. They need government intervention because government exists to protect all of us. So uh, I told you that the history was when microfinance grew to a point that it was unstoppable and so the central bank realizes it is important to have a law for it mm. and right now i just want to inform ugandans that we've got a law a law that is very good to help us uh, include Ugandans, all Ugandans out there who are putting together their resources. First of all, you want to know that not banking doesn't cover the entire country. So some of our, some of us are, uh, uh, in the rural are being served by circles. We are served by these self-help groups. So th we need their engagement for financial inclusion majorly, but also the fact that it is loose, there's informality, how do you formalize it? That is why you need the self-help group operational guidelines mm. so that we can know what is the role of the chairperson, what is the role of the manager, what is the role of the money counters, what is, well, how do you register it, how does it get recognized. We want to have a Uganda that can know that this is the money that is under this sector such that whoever wants to come and work with us in Uganda they can know that we have a formidable financial sector that is alive and active under the tire fall law mm. which includes the self-help groups which includes those who are doing commodity money microfinance the those who are doing uh, so, who are having circles for example the emioga the pdm circles mm. these ones are not yet registered as of now they will be registered but the beginning mm. can be very well housed under the self-help group operational guidelines yeah. and that is and that is what the law has amended has uh, mandated us to do mm. simply to create an enabling environment for these self-help groups to uh, to operate and how do they operate under section 99 and 100 Uganda Microfinance Sec uh, Regulator Authority is mandated to come up with those guidelines that will be implemented. Mm. And these ones have been supported by Care Uganda, and that's why we are here, so that we now issue them out. They have already been issued two days ago, and yesterday we were disseminating in Kampala. We shall continue with the process of dissemination and popularization of the law. Of, of the guidelines. Thank you, Edith. Uh, still in the same regard with the guidelines, uh, if you could walk us through some of the key provisions in these guidelines, you know, for the benefit of the viewer and for the benefit of those that are actually in these self-help groups. Yes, pursuant to the same section 100, UMRA has finalized the, the guidelines. The overall objective of the guidelines is to promote the safety 
sanity and sustainability of these self-help groups. We don't want to have groups that can not, cannot be sustainable because there was uh, a lot of these vices that you could be knowing, fraud and other things. So the specific objective was to help the groups establish a financial stabilization mechanism mm. to promote fair and equitable practices by setting minimal operational standards. We also have an objective to increase transparency in order to inform and empower the members of the groups to foster public confidence. We want these groups to grow. For example, I can tell you that uh, I have uh, uh, a group that started called YSEV. Mm. The YSEV group started small under our total arrangement and today they have become a circle and one of those that are big in, in the country because they started like this and something grew and overtook them. Now it's a circle. We don't know where they will end up. Mm. And that is why we are operating a financial system that is tired. When you tire it, people keep graduating from one tire to another to another. So the key provisions highlighted in the guidelines include uh, commencement, period which is uh, 1st January of 2023 we shall have the guidelines basically start off the principles will be there the pre we shall prescribe the membership and size it is already been done in the in the guidelines and uh, the governance and management of the group what do you do when you are put, put when you come together the registration process the requirement for you to register the timelines and responsible persons for reporting at the uh, rather on the group that is when you are reporting to Uganda Microfinance Regulator Authority. Then, the, how do you share out? The share out mechanism has all, has all been prescribed. The transitional period for the group. I mean, everything should be documented. We are not going to come down to all, because some of you could be asking yourselves, is Umrah going to run around the entire country checking a small group? No. The work is being put together and done by community district community development officers. Because I was going to ask who is actually supervising these self-help groups. Exactly. We are working with the Ministry of Gender. We are working with the lo local government ministry where all the, the district local government authority is, res is responsible for taking care of these uh, groups. The, that has been happening already, but uh, Umrah is going to have a special understanding with them so that we can be able to monitor what happens in the districts through them. Mm. And uh, they have already done a good job around, if you can see, already a Mioga is moving far. The people were saying it might not be achieved, mm. but already a Mioga has 76 billion of savings. So Ugandans can be told that it is possible. Mm -hmm. What we have said is impossible before is possible. It has been done in Kenya. In Kenya there have been circles we have seen. So an example has already been set for us. We can only emulate and move forward. We are looking forward to our country which will change direction. We want to have a nation that is managed by ourselves. We have to be in charge of our economy and that can only be possible under the tire full law. Okay. Mm. Thank you so much, Edith. Well, you've been talking about SACOs and uh, VSLs. I would like to bring you, Grace, in. Help us to draw the distinction between a SACO and a VSLA for the benefit of the viewer. Yeah, so um, I'll start with the, the VSLA. I mean, the VSLA, these are small, uh, small groups of people who are self-selected and uh, self-governed. They select themselves, come together and they agree on how much they should be saving, the minimum and maximum, then they start on learning uh, among themselves. They do, uh, they, as I said, they self-manage, everything is managed and the transactions are, they are, are managed within the group. So those are really informal at that village level. You may find even one village has more than four, five, six group, uh, groups depending on the population of the village and the, the interests of the people. Whereas uh, the circles have, have some kind of uh, regulations uh, and norms 
you know, where members have to pay uh, for you to become a member, you have to pay a membership fee, mm -hmm. uh, you have to agree and buy shares. Yes, even in the VSLs, we, we call them shares, how many shares you can buy and whatever. But the, the, the circles are more kind of, you know, more... Um, more formal i would say compared to the vsls the size this the, the the membership size is bigger you can have i think it goes up to is it one thousand or something so whereas the vsls you have like f between 15 to 30 people yes yeah well still with you grace uh uh, Care International has, you know, offered support to Umrah to develop these guidelines. I'd like to ask, why is this so? And also, how is the support that you've offered related to women economic empowerment in the country? So, um, as I said, Kea has been working in, with, in, in this sector for, in, in fact, in Uganda now it's 25 years, I think. Mm. So it, it, it started uh, with it, but uh, over time, we've realized as a, a, mm -hmm. a, as a, an organization that he, it has expanded, it has grown, mm -hmm. that it can no longer uh, you know, function mm -hmm. inf informally. Yes, the groups are going to be informal, they will remain informal. Even when you read those, uh, uh, you know, the operational guidelines that uh, have been developed, they are kind of, you know, kind of uh, pro pro protecting that informality because most of those the, 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 you know the principles the best practices have been adopted into those guidelines but as care as an organization we believe that all our work whether it's in food security as he said whether it's you know it's you know humanitarian and things like that we use VSLAs as our entry point because we know that those are platforms already organized pro platforms that we can deliver services mm -hmm. so and we are using those uh, the VSLs as platforms for empowering women economically but also socially so that's why and we've been we have a long history with Ministry of Finance we actively participated in the development of the tier 4 act and the, we worked together with other promoters to make sure that uh, they are legally recognized so now we are saying let us have an enabling env environment that is specific to the savings group sector because we can't run away from it now. Uh, Babu has just told us that we have over 500,000 groups there. Mm -hmm. Many, and when we look, we don't have data by the way. If we had data, you may find that the money which is evolved, uh, you know, moving around, uh, you know, those groups is far, far higher probably than what you have mm -hmm. in the tier three or something like that. So that's why we are saying let us work together so that we defragment the sector. We provide, you know, enabling environment for these groups to thrive. But as he said, also thrive as a growth path. For these women to be able to move from substance to micro, small, and the, the sky, yes, is the limit for these women. Thank you so much, Chris. We, we shall pick that conversation up from there. Those of you that are just tuning in, we are going to be taking a break and, of course, continue the conversation on the issuance of the self, the operational guidelines for the self-help groups and what this means for the sector as well as the community. After the break. Welcome back and thank you for staying tuned to NTV. If you are just joining us, this is a talk show on the issuance of the operational guidelines for the self-help groups. And we do have Umra Uganda here, as well as Care International, who are working hand in hand to see how they can implement and, of course, uh, you know, help individuals and the community at large when it comes to the microfinance industry. So, um, Edton, just before the break, uh, I wanted you to tell us about, you know, Care International international uganda is at the helm of you know fighting poverty of course with a specific focus on women empowerment and you have done this through supporting and facilitating saving groups would i like you to give us an update on the current progress of the initiatives and also highlight some of the challenges that you have faced while carrying out these activities mm. yeah thank you very much uh, mildred uh, just to build on what uh, grace just submitted yes that care is the is the is the grandmother of uh, 
the village savings and loan association system and we have learned a lot from it and we have had generations of the saving groups and so all those lessons we are packaged into uh, what is called the national policy regulatory program support uh, this this initiative was meant to push the women economic agenda to the next level to ensure that we are building from the beginning i told you care care's implementation is guided by the gender equality framework which looks at three uh, pillars the agency the person who is the woman to ensure they have enough capacity they can speak for themselves they can make decisions but we know that's not enough so we must also intervene um, at what we call the relations. This woman does not operate in a vacuum. How does this woman relate in the community, for example, um, when there are community level activities? Uh, do, these, do the views of women matter at that level? Are we able to educate the gatekeepers, the leaders, mm -hmm. on what they can do and support women? What is the relationship between a woman and a man at household level? And then finally, we must tackle the structure. Now, the structure is one that is going to bring what we call systemic change. Because then, uh, as care alone, we can't do much. So we must work with government, work with partners, to change structural systems that deal with the regulations, policies, and guidelines like UMRA is launching. So this uh, project works with government of Uganda, particularly with two key ministries, Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Gender, in order to improve the ecosystem, the, 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 the environment uh, in which women operate their businesses, to transform this saving that started in a box, a metallic box, and ensure that this saving goes into the bank goes into people's mobile phones and is able to be protected because uh, those of you who are viewing seeing us and belong to these groups there are so many stories that you can tell the challenge of the box has been that it is susceptible to issues of uh, for example being stolen people have collected their money it is now coming to christmas when mm. they want to share it mm. And then you hear the chairman's son, uh, Erard's son, disappeared with the box. Even the financial discipline alone, he but can also, be tempted. But uh, also, picking this money in the box, it is easier to say, let's buy meat. Yes. But we know that people now are saving for a purpose. And so what this project is doing is to support institutions like Uganda Microfinance Regulatory Authority. First of all, with evidence. We've done a lot of research. Uh, abstracts we've, we, we are able to now present to produce evidence that actually the savings groups ecosystem in this country is contributing a lot to the economy it is not well tracked we cannot for sure tell how much money is going through uh, there and because of that we cannot easily support them so we are happy now for example to learn uh, to see that the parish development model is taking services to these women and, and, and men at the grassroots. Household we are also women. happy to know that 30% of that money is going to women and girls. So as care, our value add is to say, okay, this money is going to women and girls. How is it going there? How are the women going to benefit? And so we are having interactions with agencies like Ministry of Gender under the uh, Uganda uh, Women Entrepreneurship Program to support them develop a system, for example, for reporting. They are distributing money across the country to women groups. How can they track them mm. easily? So we worked with them to come up with a management information system that everyone from the center to the grassroots is able to click at any one point and know how many women are saving. Where are they? What are their needs at the end of the day? But also, under this project, uh, I said earlier, we conducted a big study, uh, the, the first of its kind, if I may say, that was 
going to look at the groups where they are and what they are doing. So we have a database. Uh, this database uh, has a dashboard, which makes it easier for policymakers, for private sector investors, and other INGOs to click and know where groups are, what they are doing, what their real-time needs are. Our player is that this database actually is a aggregated, consolidated, and uh, managed by a government agency for sustainability so that we have a women economic empowerment platform uh, which makes it easier to click a database, a singular database, to access information, different forms of information that, uh, uh, that we need to do. But also, under this project, we are trying to see how do we work with other institutions, mm -hmm. like banking institutions, like mobile money uh, service providers, or the fintechs, to, to make it easier for the woman and the man to save the money. But if they have saved also, how do they translate it into business? So the issue of skilling becomes very important, um, an aspect, because accumulating money for you to follow and eat it will not help. So we are investing a lot in training, in skilling our people to see how we can transition them from one level to the other. But also to digitize, because we know that the circulation of mobile phones in this country has significantly increased. So how do we ensure that at least for those women who can access a mobile phone are able to save their money and secure it? How do we foster conversations at household level for mutual development? Because we know having too much money at household can cause domestic violence, but also lack of it can cause domestic violence where yeah. there is no money. Yes. And so how do we foster this conversation? I was talking to some group and the woman was confessing that uh, in her household, before this methodology, uh, they used to fight. The man used to drink and he would come and ask for food. He would leave very little money. Even for something as small as paraffin, he says, okay, um, we want money for paraffin. And then the man is like, where did you put money? Where is the paraffin? And the woman says in a polite voice, I drank it. And that causes a lot of violence. So how do we foster conversation between a man and a woman? And we have models mm. as care mm. that engage male, male engagement, uh, that, that, that foster these dialogues that create role model men in their community that are able to have uh, uh, supportive conversations that can see us moving forward. Mm. And so this NPRP uh, project in a nutshell is going to walk this journey with Uganda Microfinance Regulatory Authority, with Ministry of Finance, to ensure that these policies don't just come and uh, gather dust on shelves, but are popularized, are disseminated, mm -hmm. and government has expressed willingness to support our desire is, for example, to see an apex bank for these groups mm. because commercial bank rates are not affordable to yeah. most of these women. Yes. They cannot afford the interest. So can we have an apex bank that is able to lend and uh, give access to these groups money that is affordable mm. so that they are able to grow their enterprises? So that's the NPRPS and we are trying to work. Um, we are trying to support both in development but we also do a lot of work in emergencies. And what, uh, what would you highlight as some of the challenges that you have faced yeah. while so some, carrying some, out these projects? Yeah, some of the challenges that we, we, we encounter, um, one, have to relate to coordination. There are very many programs that are running in the country. Um, but having in regards space, to in regards to uh, livelihood, yes. in, in regards to even VSLA, like you've heard, she told you, some people will come and they baptize the same group and call it the uh, Nigina or call it the Silk. Care will come and call it VSLA. And so you'll find that the people are not, uh, we, are, we are not as, as, as organized as a sector. Mm. And so part of what we are doing as a care is to work with ministries to coordinate, to have structures mm. in place that can coordinate the actors, the civil society and others. The other challenge uh, that we've been having is uh, challenging social norms 
norms that are keeping segments of society like women and girls at the back seat. Because as we know, it is not easy, for example, to access credit if you don't have collateral. But for you to have collateral as a woman, there are very few women who own land, land. for example. So if they don't own land, it means one, they cannot use it productively. But even when they own it, do they have the titles? Even when they have the titles, are they in their names? So these negative social norms uh, pull us back. And so as care, that's why we come in with different conversations to see how do we foster? How do we lobby banks, for example, to, to relax some of the, of, the, of the requirements without losing money? money. So that uh, we have more women accessing credit, we have more women uh, uh, opening up bank accounts. There was a time in this country where if you needed to open a bank account as a woman, you needed a man yeah, <laughs> to escort you. Mm. Uh, I am happy that those things now, uh, most Phased of them out. Are, are phasing out. So we must now reach a level where they are saying uh, for women, and, and I know there are products mm. like Standard Bank that are, are now women uh, are focused that they are amplifying uh, these women. And so we are dealing with some of these systemic challenges in our communities. Mm. And then um, the other challenge that now we are dealing with was lack of uh, 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 um, guidelines, lack of regulation. So the regulation was coming and stopping at circles. Circles, these are fairly big, uh, they are rigid. And because of that, they don't get most of our women. We have, uh, in our studies, we've discovered, for example, what we call elite capture. We've discovered that most of the women, sometimes that are benefiting from most of these interventions, like circles, like loan recovery, are actually women that uh, have a certain level of education. Actually, to be precise, uh, all level. I think 71% mm. of those who benefited from UEP funds have all level. But we know majority of women don't have that all level. So there are very many women that are being left behind. Okay. And for us, we are going for the last mile, the ultra poor, to ensure that we, we, we draw them into the fold and be able to support them. Maybe, ju maybe just the last, maybe the last Briefly. one, which cross, uh, I mean, it's a, a cross-cutting challenge is the lack of data. You know, or as he said, we worked with the private entity Ipsos yes. to do this national-wide landscaping of women groups. Uh, and the Ipsos struggled to get secondary data. Mm. Struggled. So, um, and even when the data came in, that data was not really clean. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the biggest challenges that faces the sector and probably faces the government is uh, to have that data, mm -hmm. which is national wide representing mm -hmm. what is out there. And they probably woman are through the group registration. And the, yesterday uh, we were talking about to digitizing that registration yeah. uh, would do ideally kind of support that in terms of bringing in data and clean data. Thank you so much, Grace. Well, Edith, uh, because of time, I'm going to ask you to, you know, give us your closing remarks in regards to the discussion we've had and in regards to the operational guidelines. And just maybe in the grand scheme of things, uh, what would you highlight as the overall benefit of the saving groups, uh, saving groups uh, policy and also the guidelines? Uh, in the first place, I would like to to lobby all of us stakeholders and uh, tire for sector that we should uh, simply implement these guidelines. The guidelines were through a very thorough consultative process. We have been going around the country making sure that they are acceptable. Whatever we have in these guidelines is your ideas. All we are doing is formalize these ideas to make you work in a comfortable and safe way. To, to make the process of working uh, have sanity, to improve confidence as you work with your savings, money, you know how important money is. If you don't have money, you have got nothing. But again, if you have money and you lose it, you are in a worse situation. As such, I would like to rally the country to adopt the, so the operational guidelines so that we can be able to move forward. As you've heard from the care people, there's really a concern. Out there, there has been a bit of a mess. All we are doing is ensure that we put together 
what we have so that we can be able to understand it. We are going to digitize this process as you've already heard and through the process of digitization we shall be able to capture our data and information. I also want to uh, let you know that UMRA without, without, I will not it would be unfair for me to live without letting you know that you've got a complaint out there if the, there's a problem under tire force sector bring it under our umbrella the program is called complaint management system if you bring a complaint we shall always look at them if you have a problem with a money lender or if you have but make sure you also have adhered the money lender must be a licensed one by umra then you bring up don't go borrow with from a money lender who is not licensed and then you come up with a problem and then after that you bring a complaint uh, so i would like to ask you to ensure that if you encounter any challenge bring it forth before the authority we shall always deal with those issues those of us who are handling self-help groups Please follow the principles and ensure that you support registration. The government is not coming to take up our money. Government has even brought money for us. Therefore, it means there's mm -hmm. all the reasons to support. Government has supported us as tire for. Let us make sure we support ourselves. I think I also want to uh, conclude by saying uh, the tire for sector is alive. Let us continue making it lively, and then we shall manage ourselves better. Thank you so Thank you. much, uh, Edith. Uh, Grace, on behalf of uh, Care International Uganda, would you give us uh, closing remarks? Yes. Yeah, In a so, minute. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, as Care, uh, uh, as Care, we are here to. Uh, to work together to join hands with the others specifically with Umura as we said that we'll be walking the journey with Umura to popularize these uh, guidelines but also being able to document what is working and what is not working so that along the way any gaps are filled or anything that is not working out is, is uh, ad uh, addressed but at the same time we are also uh, 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 joining hands with the, as he said with the Minister of, of, of Finance to come up now with the policy framework savings Gro groups policy framework we are hoping that the ministry will be able to kind of finalize and the, uh, you know issue it out there so that it's able to bring I mean to uh, formalize the sector provide the the right home for the savings groups so that mm -hmm. the uh, those groups which are out there, they are able to benefit, they are able to tap into the any development initiative that comes into place and they, they have a voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Grace. Thank you, Edton and Edith. It's been a pleasure. Well, there you have it. You ha uh, if you uh, just joined, we were having a discussion on the issuance of the operational guidelines for the self-help groups, and they are looking to make you work in a comfortable environment and also help you improve your confidence with savings. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Have yourselves a lovely morning.